Bing. Now. Bam. All right, let's do this bad boy. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, name is Miguel Zavala, also known as MZ4250 on uh, Reddit, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Thingiverse, pretty much everywhere. Anyway, uh, for this evening, I'm going to do a short tutorial on how to 3D model a object to be 3D printed. Uh, this is going to be for a miniature for the Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, so just a quick disclaimer, I am not a professional 3D modeler. I am a amateur who loves playing D&D. He's been playing since he was a little kid and uh, just likes adding that extra customization to his games so he can, uh, you know, pretty much create whatever he wants and throw them at the players. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the process of how this is going to work tonight is... I'm going to show you guys uh, the programs that we're going to be using. Uh, I'm going to then go through the process of modeling a creature. And uh, then after that, I'll show you how, what things you have to change to make it 3D printable. And then I'll show you the programs that you use to 3D print and what kind of things to look for to make sure that you have a successful print. Uh, but before we even go any further with that, I'm going to go ahead and announce the winners for my Patreon tiers. So let me get some dice out, and let me go ahead and start announcing some winners. First, uh, <clears throat> on the uh, $10 tier, uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll some dice, and whoever lands on this is going to be the lucky patron. In the $10 tier, if, in case you're wondering, uh, basically I model something for them, uh, whatever it is they uh, want modeled, and then I'll post it on Shapeways, and they can order prints, and there you go. So anyway, there's going to be four of these people, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start rolling, and uh, let's see who the winner is. So let's go ahead and get this sucker rolling, literally. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Just rolling some dice. Okay, first one is number 24, and that's going to be... i got to count down. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I wish it was a more numeric way of doing this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... 16, 17, 18, <laughs> uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. All right. So, uh, Frenzied Stream, Frenzied Steam, congratulations. You are the first winner for uh, the $10 tier. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, write down a note. So, Frenzied Steam. Okay. Uh, next winner, let's go ahead and roll some more dice. Uh, right, number 11. All right, again, this is for the $10 tier, uh, seeing who's winning. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, uh, Ben Zakes, congratulations, you are the next winner. Zen Zakes. All right, so next winner. Go ahead, rolling some dice. Come on, baby, roll low. All right, there we go. Last one, number 34. Okay. Uh, Ryan, congratulations. You are the next winner. So go ahead and uh, write that down right there. And the last one for the $10 tier is going to go to... Number 25. Alrighty. So let's go over here. Do, 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 do. 1, 3, 4, 5, 9, 8, 27, 26, 25. Okay. And uh, Alex, $10 tier. Congratulations. You have uh, won on the $10 tier. So I will contact you guys uh, individually on Patreon and I will. Uh, you know, I'm model something for you. Okay, so then the next uh, tier that's going to be uh, going on here uh, is going to be the $25 tier. And in the $25 tier, I make something for you guys. Uh, 
Uh, and then I will print it for you with my either my resin machine or my uh, FDM machine. And, uh, you know, prep it for painting and prime it. So let's see who's going to win. Uh, for this tier, uh, there's going to be three patrons. So let's see who wins. And I got a D8 for this because there's eight of them. I'm sorry, wait. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, eight. All right, number seven, uh, Raven Schmidt. Congratulations. You have won again. I think you've won every time, Raven. So <laughs> there you go. But anyway, um, you will be getting contact from me soon. Uh, let's see here. Next one. I spelled her name wrong, but she, I know who it is. Anyway, next one is going to be, let's see here, number one. That is going to be, uh, let's see, that's uh, Lechel Vehar, a.k.a. The Source. So congrats, Lechel. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Anyway. All right, so congrats to you. And the last one on the $25 tier is, uh, you already won. Do that again. Number three, uh, Carl Rossi. Carl Rossi, congrats. You have one. So there you go. And last but not least, the $50 tier is... Uh, I only have one $50 patron. So once again, uh, <laughs> Brenda and Jared, you guys have one again. Uh, you guys have had some really awesome requests in the past, so I'm looking forward to making something new for you guys. Okay, and that is the winners for the Patreon uh, drawing that I did. I do the drawings because... Um, if I try to model for every single patron that I have, I never leave my house. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, okay, so those are the winners. Uh, congrats to you guys. I'm going to post this on YouTube, so if you missed the, this, you know, I'll just go ahead and freaking, you can just go ahead and watch those, but I'll be reaching out to you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and move back to uh, the actual uh, tutorial. So let's get this ball rolling. All right, so... First things first, uh, the program that I'm going to be using is Blender. Now, Blender is a free program that you can download uh, right from blender.org. And blender.org is uh, an amazing organization. They've made this program that's just absolutely fantastic. It's free. It is just awesome. Uh, the other program that you need to uh, do this process is Cura. Uh, Cura 15.04.6 is the one that I use uh, for my FDM printing. Uh, FDM is the printer, the 3D printer where it builds things from the ground up using a, basically a hot glue gun, if you will. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, the X program I'm going to be using. 15.04.6 uh, is the specific one that I use, and if you want to use one of the newer ones, go for it, but this has been working fine with me, so I, I like it. The other program I'm going to be using is going to be uh, the program that comes with my resin printer. Uh, this is an XYZWare for the Noble uh, resin printer. Uh, this is Usually resin printers come with their own uh, programs, and this is the one I'll be using for my XYZ. Uh, I will also be using uh, Windows 3D Builder to help fix up any errors that come out of this model. Uh, this comes with every Windows program, and it's, uh, it's a pretty solid program. Anyway, we're going to get to that later, so let's go ahead and just get started on the actual 3D modeling. So, here is Blender, the wonderful, wonderful Blender. Uh, this is a really great program. Now, let me go over some of the controls. First, what you need to do is, if you have any background in 3D modeling, uh, you might want to change the user preferences right from the start. So when you uh, go ahead, go to user preferences and go to input, uh, go ahead and select left and make sure that uh, continuous grab is also selected. And when it comes to editing, make sure global undo is checked. So global undo is checked. Uh, make sure continuous grab is checked and select left. Left is uh, the left button is usually used in 3D modeling because for selecting things, and that's pretty pretty common, uh, you know, control. Anyway, so now let me go over the controls. So the middle mouse button you use a lot. You use it to zoom in. You use it to zoom out. When you hold it down, you can rotate all around just like that. that sounds like a rhyme. Anyway. 
And then the uh, right mouse button is uh, has its own uses, which I will go over in a bit. And the left mouse button is going to be your primary uh, button. Now, let's go ahead and start modeling. So the creature that I'm going to be creating today is going to be a veggie pygmy uh, thorny. So the thorny is basically like their mounts or like their pets, and it's a medium-sized creature. By the way, this is Wizards of the Coast intellectual property. Don't try to sell this stuff. Don't try to freaking make this and then try to freaking go on a black market and try to make money off of this because that's pretty messed up. I don't sell any of uh, the stuff that's Wizards of the Coast intellectual property. I make sure I keep things nice and safe. Um, the things that I do sell are obviously things they don't own, like, you know, goblins and stuff. But anyway, so I'll just get that disclaimer out of the way. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to create. It is a quadruped uh, being, so four legs. It's going to be not a traditional humanoid model that I'm going to be making. So that's why it's going to be a little different from my other tutorial. So uh, I have an idea of where what the kind of creature I'm going to create. I have a picture of it right now loaded up on my... Uh, my computer over here on the other side. So we're going to get started. All right, so first let's go ahead and look around and get familiar with this area. Right down here is your modes that you're going to be selecting depending on the object that you uh, are going to be messing with. And I'm going to go ahead and start with something very basic. If you go to, to your left side here, you go to create and you can select an object, cube. Cube is the generic object you pretty much make almost anything out of. So anyway, I went over here on the left side, I'm in object mode, I went to create and cube. Now that this object is here, uh, I can select it obviously by pressing the left mouse button. If I press the A key, I deselect. So I selected, A key, deselect. So there you go. Now let's go into edit mode. So down here, this is where I select the uh, different modes, there are a variety of modes. But anyway, I'm going to edit mode. And in edit mode, you will see that I have a variety of new functions and things to mess with. Here's your tools that you're going to be a little bit messing around with over here. And over here, all the way to the right, you have your modifiers, which is located under this tool tab right here. We're going to go through all this uh, as I make this creature. All right, so uh, now let's go into the actual uh, objects, or excuse me, the uh, pieces of this object. So if you go down here uh, and you select right here to vertices, you will see I can select the individual points of the object and a three-dimensional object is created first by a bunch of odd little points right here which are the vertices or vertexes and so that's a singular point then you have your lines which is between two points and then you have your face which is three or more points so that's how you select those and uh, when I model, I'm going to sometimes have to see things in x-ray. So I press the Z key, the Z key. That's how you can see things in through uh, the x-ray mode, which is going to be very useful for modeling. Anyway, now I am going to, obviously, this is just a square. It's very basic. Can't really do a lot with it. So it's time to expand, shall we? So I'm going to go ahead and get back into object mode. I press the tab key, tab, and now I'm back in object mode. Edit mode, object mode, tab. The tab button is uh, your, your quick reference. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into edit mode, and I'm going to, going to select this entire object. And how I did that is I, let me just unselect this, A, but A key. All right, so I press the control button. I use my right mouse button, and I select the entire thing just like that. The other way to do this is by, let me just deselect everything, P press the B key, and I can select all of the faces like that as well. So that's just so you know how I do that. Anyway, now I'm going to go to these tools over here, and I'm going to add some more geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and subdivide. So subdivide, boop, there you go. And uh, so now I have more geometry to mess with, so this thing actually looks like an actual object. So now let me go ahead and start making this thing a little bit rounded. Because uh, basically what I'm going to do is to create this quadruped, I'm going to first make the most basic, basic shape, which is just going to be a torso, uh, so the hips, the area where the head's going to be. And then once the basic shape is down, then I start getting crazy with the details, like limbs and then claws and things like that. This is no different than any other art form, where you just start from the basics and you work your way out. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and make this thing a little bit circular, a little bit tubular. So 
what I'm doing here is uh, first I select one piece. Holding down the shift key, I can select something else, just like that. So shift, shift, shift. So you see what I'm doing there. And I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, expand this. I press the S key to make things go outward because S means scale. And then I can, you know, go ahead and make things go outward like so. So I press the S key and things go out. And uh, I'm not really digging how this is looking, so I'm going to keep messing with this. And by the way, I could have also just made a uh, circle if I wanted to, to just, you know, save some time. But I, I want to show you guys how to do some basic controls. So shift, 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 holding down shift and squeezing with the S key, just like that. Again, going all around, squeezing down with the S key, scale. Okay, and uh, starting to get there. And then go over here. And now it's time to mess with some other uh, neat tricks here. So I'm going to go ahead and use these individual tools right here. So this is the transform tool. I'm going to grab the little uh, blue key over here. And I'm going to lift up a little like so. So I see how I did that. And then I go over here. And if I want to select one vertice and then go all the way to this one and select the ones in between what I do is I press the control button and then I just press this boop and then I selected everything in between so control button selects all the things on a line so just keep that in mind so I'm gonna go up like that right there okay and then if I wanted to uh, let's just say I wanted to expand this entire line a little more I hold down the alt key and ta da or ta da <laughs> there you go and I've selected everything so holding down the alt key selects the entire row of vertices so just keep that in mind I'm gonna expand this out just a little like that S key okay and then I want this to squeeze in just a little so I select both of those and then I go in all right so right now what we have basically is just a very uh, a rounded version of what we originally were working with uh, not very very convincing just said obviously so I'm just gonna go ahead and mess with this with a little bit more and basically get like the center area of a torso okay so now I think that's good enough now I want to expand so I'm going to select these right here with holding down control key pressing down the buttons and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side here and I'm going to use now the scale the transformation scale over here this changes there, the, what the basic load up is. So over here is transformation, so things are moving around. But now I'm using scale right there. And I'm going to expand a little, just like that. So that's how you scale. And it uh, looks like a pretty decent amount right there. Now I want to add some more geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, expand this just a little like here. And then I'm going to press the E key. The E key extrudes the surface that of which I am working on. And it goes like that. So remember, the E key is to extrude. This is going to be one of the most important uh, buttons you're probably going to want to press. So E key extrudes. OK, I'm going to do that again, like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale outward again, like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the E key again. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale inward just a little. OK, so far so good. Uh, let me go ahead and. Uh, Move this out just a little more. Alrighty, scale out just a little bit. And then extrude again. Bring it in just a little, like so. And, uh, you know, I think I need some more geometry here because this is where the leg is going to be. So here's another tool I'm going to use, the loop, cut, and slide. So I just drag right over here. And as you can see, I just created an entire line that I can mess with. Scaling out with the S key. I'm going to do that one more time right here, scaling out with the S key. OK, so, so far, so good. Uh, all right, so I'm not quite satisfied with how this looks. I'm going to go ahead and expand just a little bit more in this area. So there you go. By the way, oh, uh, I got a question. This is fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Hey, Wade Watts, you are awesome. And thank you for being here tonight. Um, by the way, I loved you in the Ready Player One. You are amazing. Uh, anyway, so let's see here. I don't need that just yet. Um, okay, so I got that, that, that. Let me go ahead over here. Uh, da, 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 da. 
I really like Player Ready Player One. That was a great movie. Anyway, uh, so let me just expand right here, just a little bit like that, and uh, go ahead and expand right there. Okay, uh, okay, so that's very basic quadruped uh, torso going on right here. It's pretty really basic stuff. Anyway, um, going back into object mode, I noticed that this thing's no longer centralized, so I'll go over here to set origin, and I set origin center to the mass, so just like that, and now it's right in the middle. I'm just going to drag it over here to the middle of the uh, work surface. I'm going to squeeze it down just a little bit. Okay, so we're not quite done yet, obviously. Uh, now I need to make some space for the head. And I'm just going to go ahead over here. I'm going to select all these. Again, I press the control button to select all of these uh, vertices, or excuse me, these faces. And let me go ahead and make a basic uh, neck for this creature. So, oh, for everybody who's uh, tuning in right now, I'm making this guy, this thorny thing. So that's what I'm making right there. Anyway, because uh, I saw a bunch of people just tuned in. Uh, all right, so let's get a neck. So I'm going to go over here and get a neck. Okay, it's got a very short neck. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some basic geometry down for the head. I'm going to scale it up just a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit wider because it kind of has like a newt thing going on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And, uh, okay, so there you go. Go ahead and uh, get a little more geometry for the head. And a little bit more right there. And one more right there. Okay, so very basic shape. Obviously, this is going to get more detailed later on. All right, so let's see here. His top of his neck is actually very streamlined in comparison to the rest of his body, so I'm just going to bring this up just a little like that. And I'm going to have to bring this up too, just like that. And then I'm going to show you guys another tool, the Rotate tool. I'm going to freak in... It's, so the controls are basically just like the other controls where you can select these little rings and then it just uh, rotates as you want it to. So I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up just a little more. Do the same over here. So as I stated before, with any art form, uh, 3D modeling, you start off with the most basic shape and then you work your way from there. Hey, kitty. Oh, my cat just walked by. All right, that's enough of that. Now, now that we have the most basic shape down... Uh, I need to go ahead and start uh, using some modifiers to start, you know, getting down some more basic shapes. So, uh, once this object, I go back into object mode, press tab, like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and, oh, excuse me, before I even think of doing that, I need to get rid of half of this geometry, and I'll show you why. So, I'm going into x-ray mode, B. I select all the faces that are on one half of the object, and then I'm going to delete them. I press the delete key, delete faces, oh, they're gone. Now I go ahead and go over to object mode again. Oh, I got a question here. Uh, thanks for showing what you're creating. It'd be kind of cool if you use a Steam overlay to pin reference as you were creating the bottom right corner of the screen. Spin. Huh. So, uh, Mick Struthers, thank you for your uh, tip. Um, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I just started doing this stuff like uh, a freaking couple months ago. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to learn if you want to freaking send me a link or whatever. It's all good. Um, Anyway, uh, but yeah, just so you know that I'm creating, I am creating uh, this creature right here, this creature right here. All right, anyway, where was I? Uh, oh, by the way, I'm posting this on YouTube, guys, so if you miss anything, I'm going to freaking get back to it. All right, so I'm back at the Modifiers tab, and I'm going to go ahead and press Mirror, and it's going to create a mirrored surface of the object. And what's cool about this modifier is when I grab something here, I'm pressing the G key to just randomly move it. G, and see what happens there? Ta-da! Anything that I do on this side warps over here on this side. So that's going to save us a lot of time, because otherwise I would have been wasting a lot of time modeling. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some geometry to create some limbs. So first, I'm going to go here back to the loop cut and slide tool. Go over here, 
and add some geometry right there. And I'm going to go ahead and select this faces, the these uh, edges right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, move it out just to give it a little bit more of a streamlined look. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing right over here, grabbing a little bit and giving it just a little bit more of a rounded edge. And uh, yeah, see here. And then I'm going to go over here and uh, freaking do the same thing. Just give it a little bit more of a rounded edge, give it some geometry. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, if anybody has any tips on just 3D modeling in general or how to make this stream more uh, you know, useful, by all means, share away because... I am always willing to learn new things, so you know you guys can definitely partake in this as well. All right, anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, round this up just a little right here. Okay, I got a good amount of geometry. Now it's time to make some limbs. So you're going to make a limb, uh, whether it's a leg or a arm. You got to start with a rounded, uh, you know, starting point. So you go over here, and I'm going to grab individual vertices. And I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, rounded starting point, like so. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Mixtrother says, I see you're using OBS, so here's a brief guide and the overlay of images for viewers, since you said the link would be cool. Dude, sweet. Thank you, Mixtrothers. Okay, I'm going to definitely uh, click on that and see if I can expand on this even more. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do that now since I'm already in the middle of the stream. But thank you very much for that. I'm going to definitely freaking try to improve uh, my performance here. Anyway, all right, where was I? So I got that set up right there for that limb right in the front. I'm going to squeeze it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, I'm going to go and freaking move this around right here. Do the same thing as I did before. This limb, I think, should be just slightly bigger than the other one, uh, but not by much. Just a little bit. Right there. Uh, okay, let me squeeze this down just a little right here. Oops. All right, there we go, just like that. All right, that's pretty good. And I'm looking at the image of the creature, so I probably should move this thing forward just a little bit like so. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty good. This thing and move back over here, just a little bit right there. Okay, now it's time to actually make some limbs. I see Jay Z four two five zero. She clicked on Twitter status. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, that's uh, my wife right there sharing a Twitter link. I'm kind of curious what that is. Uh, Jen, should I click on that right now, or should I? Is that for everybody else? Anyway, uh, let me get back to this limb. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press the R key and the R key is going to rotate this thing manually based off of what I'm seeing. It's not a pinned image, but for your reference at Mixtruthers. Okay. Thanks, babe. That's my wife. She's awesome. All right. Anyway, where was I? Time to make a limb. All right. So I'm pressing the G key. I'm pressing the R key. And I am... Just going ahead and rotating visually uh, rather than through the tools. All right, so that's that. Uh, so that's the top part of that limb. I'm going to go ahead and extrude again. Rotate just a little right here. So far, it's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude, or excuse me, G key. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude again right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it down just a little bit. And so far, so good. Um, I'm actually, I think this neck is now a little too long, so I'm going to go ahead and just squeeze this back in just a little bit right there. Uh, da -da -da -da. Just bring that back in just a little. Bring that back in just a little. Bring it down. Okay. Anyway, where was I? All right, so go ahead and freaking extrude one more time. And just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and flatten this right here to make this nice and even. Just like so. Just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just keep flattening it one more time so that way it's nice and flat. Move forward just a little bit right here. And 
I'm going to extrude one more time like that. Now that's very basic a very basic shape. I'm going to get into claws and toes and stuff in a little bit later, but for now I just need to get the shape down. And um, so let me just go ahead and get back to that. We had a little bit of geometry right there. Let's go ahead and rotate, add a little bit of mass, do the same right here. And okay, so, so far so good. All right, let me go ahead and make a back leg now. So go over here. Uh, let me go ahead and freaking move this thing up. Okay. Like so. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, making myself a back leg. So kind of right over here. Like that. Extrude. Okay. I'm just using the R key and the G key right now. So I'm making myself a nice line right there. Go ahead and uh, stretch a little right there. And uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, it looks like it's a little bit high up. Let me bring that up again. Okay. And then... Oh, I got another question from Mixed Others. How are you making the change uh, to the mirror to the other side? Oh, uh, so Mixed Others, uh, what I did was I uh, made... I'm using a mirror uh, modifier. So what happened was uh, I... Uh, oh, there oh, you see it. <laughs> okay, now you see it. Yeah, so if anybody missed that, uh, I created a cube. I uh, then split the geometry in half, and then I go ahead and I made it use the modifier, the mirror modifier, and that's how I did that. So in case you missed that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, mixed others. Good question, good question. Uh, again, guys, I am posting this on YouTube when this is done, so if you've missed any of the opening stuff where I showed you how I started this process, it's going to be right there online for anybody to do what they got to do. Anyway, where was I? Back to this leg. All right, so I'm creating a back leg. Creating a back leg, like so. Da -da, da -da -da. All right. Mm -mm. Making some 3D happen. This is happening. Anyway, where was I? Alrighty, so back to this thing. Okay. Now remember, uh, I don't want to do a lot. I don't want to create a lot of geometry right now because, like I said, I'm going to be moving this thing and messing with the freaking mesh and just you know going crazy. So just basic shapes for now. Okay. And right there. And a little more geometry right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this forward like so. Alrighty. Okay. Alright. Very basic quadruped. Very basic shape. Very ugly. Not exactly the most charismatic looking thing. But we are going to make this thing look beautiful, damn it. Because that's what I do. Alrighty. Okay. So that's a very basic shape right there. Now, now it's time to go ahead and get a little more dynamic. So, uh, first things first. Uh, this creature has a very unique looking face. It's got four eyes. It's got a weird newt-like shape going on in its head. So we're going to go ahead and start adding some of those details now. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and create some uh, eye sockets for this thing. Hey kitty, hey kitty. My cat's rubbing up against me. All right, so let's make some eye sockets for this bad boy. Um, well, before I do that, i got to get the basic shape down. And in case you guys are wondering, it's got that newt thing going on right here. It's kind of got a basic triangular shape, so we're going to go ahead and start uh, doing that. So I got the book out, and that's the why I'm doing this right now. All right, so let's get some, uh, let's get some shape, some shapes going on right here. Get a nice triangular uh, format going on with this bad boy right here. Using the vertices now. Uh, oh, I got a question uh, at MZ or JC. Oh, this is a question for my wife, actually. So, Jen, you go ahead and uh, answer that if you want. 
Uh, although you are in class right now, so let me go ahead and see if I can answer it. Jay-Z4050, can I get a link uh, to the YouTube channel to check it out later? Twitch seems to want to do a whole lot of loading tonight. Oh, actually, uh, used to lurk. Um, I can, uh, if you go on a YouTube and you look up MZ4250, um, yeah, but I have my previous uh, tutorials up, and I'm going to post this one up there later tonight as well, so you can see whatever you missed. Um, so yeah, anyway, <clears throat> where was I? All right, so back to this thing, triangular shape, head. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start messing with this thing right here, and uh, let's see here. Okay, so we got the most basic shape going on right there. Let me go ahead and move this forward just a little bit right here. And uh, used to lurk says, awesome, thanks for the response. Hey, man, I'm here to help. I do what I do. I'm here for you guys. All right, anyway. Uh, so let's see here. All right, so triangular shape going on with the head. Now let's go ahead and uh, make the most basic uh, shape for the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut away on some geometry in here. So first let's get the, well, I, let's go ahead and use uh, existing geometry that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and use that right there. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and add a little more geometry to make the rest of the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and take the knife tool, which is right over here on the left, knife tool. I'm going to go ahead and just cut right across this thing. So I left click, left click, left click, and that actually should do it. And then I press enter. And now I created a line that goes across this entire thing. When I, re when I recombine this entire object, I'm going to use this geometry to create the mouth. But uh, for now, this is all that I need. Uh, I got new subscribers, yay! Anyway, okay, so that's all that I needed for now. Uh, so now let me go ahead and continue working on this thing. Uh, so let's see here. I'm going to need some more geometry right around here, going across the entire body, actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little another line right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, add more to this uh, triangular surface. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more geometry across. And then I'm going to go ahead and make like a bit of a crest kind of situation. So I'm just going to go ahead and take those. And I'm going to go ahead and expand a little right here. And I'm going to go ahead and then press the G key. And I'm going to go out like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this up right here. And then angle it with the R key. So far, so good. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more geometry right here too. I'm going to add just like a little bit of uh, a little bit of like a, some horn action going on here. So extrude and extrude one more time, just like that. And then I'm going to do that one more time on top of the head. Nah, it's actually good right there. All right, now it's time to make some eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and use the existing geometry that I have. I'm going to go ahead and make some eyes. So first, I'm going to use this bad boy right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make an eye socket. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take these two, and I'm going to subdivide like so. Boop. All right, now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and use the existing geometry here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this eye socket. So first, extrude, and then squeeze it down. Then I do the same thing on the other one. Extrude, squeeze it down. Bam. Jen says, oh, Jen's, uh, my wife just posted the YouTube link. All right, so I want this... Uh, these eyes to go outward but if I were to just use this as is it would just go straight up and that and that's not gonna work I want it to go outward following the current direction that it's already facing so to do that I'm gonna go to global and instead I'm gonna select normal and it bases itself it's moving off of the directions that all the vertices are currently facing so it's called normal and uh, so now it's going outward and inward depending on basically where they're pointing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sink, sink these things in just a little bit. 
Not a lot, just a little, like right there. All right, so now back to uh, modeling. So I want this to look circular because they're eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pressing the G key, just moving in like so. And then I do the same thing over here. Just moving in like so. All right. I'm just going to try to keep them as close as possible to their each, each of their shapes and their sizes. All right, like that. So far, so good. Uh, he's got little nostrils, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a little geometry going across the way. So like that. Now, because I subdivided here, this obviously ruins this mesh here. So I'm going to have to manually enter this knife right here, like that. Like that. Doot. And doot. Okay. And now let me go ahead and add some nostrils to this little fella. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Um, actually, it looks like it's kind of a... It takes up this entire area. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude, close it in just a little like so, and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate, angle it just a little bit, bring it in just a little like so, and then I'm going to go ahead and mess with the geometry, make it look good, like so. Let's see here, oops, that's not going to work. Okay, and I have somebody on my channel, oh my good, anyway. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this, and it's going to go inside. All right, so that is a nostril. Okay, let me make these eyes look good. I don't want to get too crazy on the details because, uh, actually, no. I'm going to hold off on that just yet. I want to make sure everything else is good before I continue. All right, so, um, okay. Let's go ahead and let me fix this jawline real quick. This looks kind of silly right now. Right there. Bring that in like so. Expand this just a little right here. Bring it out. Bring it down. And then bring this up. Now I want to get back into global because if I mess with this in any way that's not exactly linear when you're right next to the middle area, that'll mess things up when I connect things again. So I want to make sure I'm very precise with the global stuff. Okay, that jawline looks a little more refined. All right, where was I? Now it kind of looks like a little ankylosaurus. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I need a drink. One second, I'll just take a sip here. Mmm, mango nectar, delicious. All right, where was I? Uh, okay, so go ahead and uh, start making some claws. All right, so this thing, uh, just so you know, looks like it's got a traditional uh, freaking five claw situation in the front. Well, hold on, one, two, three, four. I guess there's going to be like a thumb claw thing over here. All right, so four claw, four fingers, and then a thumb. All right, cool. And I got the book open. I just wanted to freaking show you guys on the screen as well. All right, so I'm making myself a nice clawed foot. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Go ahead and select these edges right here. Mm-hmm. Okay, not too shabby. Go ahead and uh, make myself uh, move this in right here, like so. Vertices. Get that bad boy in there. Get this guy right here, like this. And right there. Like that. Like that. Okay, let's get some claws. So I'm going to go ahead and use the extrusion tool. Now, I actually want to extrude all of these at the same time, and I don't want to just, you know, make them all like that. Obviously, that's not going to work. I want to create some geometry uh, all at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over here, and I'm going to press extrude individual. I press this button just once, and then with my mouse movement, I can just slight mouse movement. I create all four of those bad boys right there. And now I have the geometry needed to make some, to some toes. So, let me go ahead and uh, squeeze this bad boy down here. And go ahead and uh, grab you. And I actually want this toe to be just a little bit bigger. 
and I'm going to grab this one right over here, right there, just like that, and then one more right over here, really basic shit, I'm sorry, basic stuff, sorry, I didn't mean to curse, if there's any kids watching, alrighty, just like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start messing with this a little bit more, make it a little bit more like claws, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix the circular pattern of this. So I'm going to go ahead and press the, lot, the loop again. Go ahead and add some geometry right there. I'm going to go ahead and make these a little more tubular. So just a little bit. Move things around just a little. And then uh, go from there. All right. Do the same thing over here. Just manually moving some vertices. Sometimes it's nice to just keep things simple. And do the same thing over here. Da, 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 da. Basic tubes. And do the same thing over here. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Okay, really basic stuff. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, add a little more geometry and then move on from there. All right, so let's get a claw right over here. Expand this just a little right there. Go ahead and rotate just a little like that. Now I'll go ahead and expand and extrude and just like that and then one more. Okay, that's one. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again over here. <clears throat> again, I am just pressing the E key, S key, E key, S key, R key, E key, S key, G key, R key. So that was just me just using just my regular button controls, and I was able to do a really basic looking claw. So that was that. All right. This is actually getting a little silly. Let me squeeze this down just a little right there. Okay. Then let me go ahead and do the same thing over here. Do 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 do. So a lot of it's a uh, lot of it's you know very numerical, very precise, and a lot of it's just screwing around until it looks right. So yeah, really basic stuff. Okay. All right. And I want this claw to actually be a little bigger than the other one, so I'm just going to bring it up just like, a little bit like that. Okay, last one. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller than the other one, but not by much. Not by much. Okay. Do, 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 do. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. Uh, some folks are color tuning in right now, so I've already go covered a lot of the basics. So if you got any questions, go ahead and share. It's all good. Alrighty. Uh, so let's go ahead and make this uh, toe, or excuse me, this claw that's going to come out of here. So extrude, do, like that. <laughs> Make it a club. Oh, I got a question here. Uh, one Miku Hatsune asks, uh, why are you box modeling instead of sculpting? Uh, I'm box modeling because I'm creating the basic shape first, and then once I have created all of the basic shapes and the most basic geometry is available, then I'm going to go ahead and start uh, sculpting away and making this thing look nice and smooth and sexy. So, yeah, this is the most basic uh, 3D modeling uh, program or method that I'm doing first. But uh, sculpting is coming. I just got to start from the beginning, you know? So, good question. Thank you for that. Okay, so, yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, flatten them some of this area because things have gotten a little out of control. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that right there. And, uh, yeah. But, yeah, so uh, 
one Miku Hatsune does bring up a very interesting point uh, because some modelers they actually sculpt like with uh, the Pixelogic ZBrush and like for really basic stuff just create things from scratch but I do it a little bit old school I create the shape first from uh, boxes and then I work my way around from there so yeah all right so we got a pretty nice foot going on here now to save some time I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this entire geometry and I'm just gonna copy paste it and bring it over here to the back because the foot on the back is actually not too dissimilar from what I'm dealing with in the front except that I noticed that it doesn't have a very refined uh, toe uh, right here so I'm actually just gonna grab this geometry so let me show you how that works so what I do first is I select all of the geometry on this area. I'm pressing shift, just so you guys know, shift and alt at the same time. So I can select an entire thing, uh, just like so, shift and alt, and then I left click. And then I'm going to want to select all the things that the shift and alt did not get. So I'm just going to go ahead here, holding down control, and with the right mouse button, I'm selecting the geometry in the x-ray mode. X-ray mode was with the Z button, guys. Anyway, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm pretty comfortable with the things that I have selected right here. And I'm going to press Shift and Alt one more time. And I'm going to select this line right here. And actually, no, I don't need that. I'll take that back. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the Duplicate button. And with the Duplicate button, boop, just like that. Press it one more time to let it go. And there you go. And just in case you missed that, duplicate button is duplicate, and I can move around like that. Or, or, let me see here. Let's get it out of here. Duplicate, and then press it again to get the control of the object again. So there you go. Anyway, I just, uh, that got weird. All right, so let me go back. Oh, by the way, to go back, it's control Z, just like a Word document, control Z to go back to whatever it is that you uh, just did. So, anyway, I got another question here. It says, um, Mick Struthers, uh, see here, Mick Struthers says, uh, did you know Blender has a way that you can use the keys to press them? It's called screencast keys for future reference. Very cool, Mick Struthers. Thanks. Shoot, I'm learning all kinds of neat stuff here. All right. Thank you very much for that tip. I'm going to try that next time for sure. Uh, anyway, where was I? Okay, so back to duplicate. All right. Get that back here. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, let's see here. So you would not have to say the keys. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, thanks, Big Struthers. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. And, you know, that is awesome. I'm definitely going to do that next time for sure. So I don't have to announce everything. But, uh, you know, I like teaching people stuff. All righty. It's nice to learn new things every once in a while. Anyway. So, where was I? Alright, so I'm moving things back here. <laughs> uh, my wife is commenting right now on the stream chat. Alrighty, so, uh, let's get back to this creature. So, alright, so I got a foot back here. I'm going to move it back just a little bit like that. And now it's time to combine this geometry. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going back into the line mode. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of these uh, lines right here, all these lines right here. And then I can either do two things. I could either A, uh, with the individual vertices, I can select this one, shift select this one. And then I can go ahead and press uh, Alt M. And then I can combine them with one of these options. So like at center. And then I would just go ahead and do the entire thing all around. That's one way of combining this. However, I want some geometry right here between these lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all of these edges. It's just like that. And then I'm going to go to Mesh, Edges. And I'm going to go to Bridge, Edge, Loops. Ta-da! So there you go. I just created a little angle surface area. Alrighty. Anyway, where was I? 
So now that the uh, claws have been created, uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue messing with the overall shape. For instance, this little guy, he probably should have a butt. He probably should have a butt. Just a little bit of a booty. And I'm going to give him a tail, which is going to go there in a little bit. Alrighty, so let's see here. Um, okay, I think we got the basic shape down. Um, now it's time to get a little more creative uh, with, uh, you know, some more uh, moving around the geometry and stuff like that. So let's see, how what are we doing on time? All right, cool. All right, so it's time to move on to, you know, real nice refined details and also mess with the the way the, the body is uh, shaped too. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, go into object mode, and then I'm going to go here to apply and boop and ta-da, it is one object. Aha! So there you go. It's now one object. Now it's time for the fun stuff. So first, um, I want this thing to look like it's been walking. And there's two ways of doing this portion where you want to mess with the shape of the body. You can either create a skeleton and rig it and then move limbs around, uh, which I unfortunately do not have time for. And or you could do it the more ghetto way, which is just selecting large groups of the object and freaking you know, just manually moving it. It's going to be, uh, it's not the preferred way of doing it, but in situations like this where I'm low on time, it, it works. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. First, I want this thing to start looking like how uh, I want, you know, how it should look when it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Add Modifier, and I'm going to go ahead and add Subdivision Surface. Now this thing looks a little bit smoother, because this is ultimately what it's going to look like, nice and smooth and stuff. I'm going to press this too to help with the look. So i got the subdivision surface going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and work with the uh, shape. So first, I'm going to go ahead and go to x-ray mode. I'm going to go ahead and move this uh, torso just slightly, like so. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate just a little bit. Just a little bit, just like that, just like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and select all this geometry right here, just like this, and let me make sure that I got everything selected. Uh, oh, I got to hear uh, Tinku Hatsune says, all animators just had a stroke after hearing that. I know. <laughs> I know. I just, I, we really don't have time to make a whole skeleton right now. I just, this is a very short uh, tutorial. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yes, no, no, trust me. The skeleton is the best way to do this, but I really, I don't have time. I got to pick up my wife in like an hour, so I got to make this go fast. <laughs> Anyway, so this is the ghetto way of uh, moving limbs around, but it works, especially for something like this. So go ahead and uh, move this back just a little right there, and take this, and go ahead and just move it right there, expand just a little because of the movements of the muscles. All right, <clears throat> select this right here, moving forward. Uh, I know, I, my animating uh, professors right now is like, how dare you not make a skeleton, you monster! It's like, no, I don't have time, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. I taught you better, Miguel. How could you? Anyway. Uh, Alright, so it's just minor changes. It's not like I'm, you know, making a huge freaking... Massive changes to geometry right now. Alrighty. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Just moving forward like that. I'm going to actually go ahead and do some rotations because, uh, you know, the body doesn't change shape. Things just rotate. That's how it's supposed to be. <sighs> yeah. Trust me, if I was a faster rigger, I probably would throw that into this animation too. But I am not a faster rigger, guys. So I'm just improvising. 
do 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 I bet you there's a quadruped quick rig on Thingiverse or something right now. I'm pretty sure there is. Alright. Okay. Okay. Very basic shape going on here right now. Just a little bit of movement, nothing too crazy. Let me go ahead and, uh, oops. Do, do, do. Okay. All right, just like that. Let's see here. Oh, what's, I got a thing here. It says, do you have any VODs on simple, low-poly stuff to start with? If we're interested in doing this as well, um, I on on YouTube. Uh, this is a question from uh, Vicarian. On YouTube, I put in uh, another tutorial where I started off with uh, um, a humanoid shape that was rigged, and that helped with uh, some basic stuff. And actually, at the beginning of this video, I created this thing from a cube. So, um, you know, if, I hope that helps. So, I'm gonna put this on YouTube though, so you'll see where how I started all of this mess. Anyway, all right, so limbs forward, check. Let me go ahead and move this forward just a little bit more. Um, just a little bit more like that. And all right, and I think that's pretty good. I'm not trying to get like a walking pose. It's just, you know, a little bit of dynamism right here. Okay, uh, okay, so that's the basic shape. Let me go ahead and add a little tail to this guy. So go ahead and grab this right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a nice little tail, like so. And my foot just fell asleep. That feels great. All right. <laughs> Do, 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 do. And go ahead and just make a really basic tail. got the tail down. So far, so good. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into some details. All right, so first things first, go ahead and make some eyes. Uh, actually, I want to move this head a little bit to the uh, left. So again, to all my animators out there, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not using a rig. Anyway. Do, 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 do. All right. That's pretty good right there. Okay, where was I? So, let's get some eyes on this sucker. Alrighty, first things first. Inward it goes. Squeeze in. Outward it goes. Out. And that was an eyeball. Alrighty. It's actually a little too... That's better. Okay. By the way, guys, um, to my animators out there... Uh, when you, uh, gener when you create a model, uh, usually you create an inner cavity for the mouth, an inner cavity for the eyes, and you animate from there. Uh, for 3D printing, you actually want an object to be completely solid all around with no cavities uh, because the 3D printing programs will not register the cavities uh, very accurately, and it can lead to a lot of weird, weird stuff, weird, weird effects, and you want to avoid that whenever you can. <laughs> So just keep that in mind. No mouth cavities, no eyeball cavities. Just keep that in mind, guys. Alrighty. Da, 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 da. 
making some eyes. Making some eyeballs. Okay, so far so good. And now for that mouth that we were working on earlier. So let's see here. All right. Oops. Making a mouth. Making a mouth. Just like that. And then in it goes. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into normal. And I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this thing. Actually, it looks like we're going to have to get a little crazy here and use the view. So view changes things depending on the literal view of the camera. Sometimes you have to get in there and just uh, go ahead and do it that way. All right, and that actually worked out pretty well. Okay, so there we go. Now I have uh, the mouth. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, create some internal geometry. So I go inside here, make some internal geometry right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more geometry right on the outside of the mouth area right there. And then I'm going to get a little crazy. Now I'm going to go ahead and make some weird teeth. Now, not like legit teeth, like uh, an actual animal, but this thing's a giant mushroom monster, so this teeth is like, looks like rot and filth and just looks disgusting. It doesn't look like a mouth. It looks like, like a mushroom had sex with a alligator dog. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this is not going to be a pretty mouth. This is going to be ugly. And I love modeling ugly things because they're just so much more interesting sometimes. Anyway. Alrighty. So, making an ugly mouth. Just nasty. Like this thing's here. blunt here. This thing's got like a little bit of a curvature going on here. This one over here is just like like just blah it's gross let me add some more geometry to this mouth right here and do the same oh I already did it over there and uh, this is gonna be disgusting I'm gonna squeeze this down right here and this is gonna be gross too just like that and uh, let me go over here Let's smooth this out just a little bit Oh, what does this guy say? Uh, Scott Daly says, oh yeah, a central tooth for that Tom Cruise look. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, was, that was good, Scott. That was, that was good. I'll give you that. <laughs> oh, Tom Cruise. I wonder what he's going to be running away from this coming movie. Let me go to normal. Seems like all he does in all the movies, he just runs away and then he hits his head on something and he runs away some more. I mean, ah, whatever. I'm not going to get into Hollywood talk. I don't even really care for that stuff. Ugly looking mouth. Ugly looking mouth. Somebody at work tried to justify that Tom Cruise is the most perfect person. I'm like, you are one weird dude. Why are you my coworker? Anyway, I'm not going to talk about work. Here to do art. <laughs> do, 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 do. That is one ugly looking mouth. I love it. Looks kind of derpy. It's like derp. Alright. <laughs> there are definitely more geometrically favorable ways of making a mouth, but I want this thing to look ugly. I just want it to have a little bit of personality. <laughs> It's missing a tooth there. It's got a snaggle tooth right here. It's just ugly. I like it. Alrighty. Okay. Alright. I, I dig it. Okay, so it's got an ugly mouth now. So there you go. Um, Looks like uh, it looks like I'm looking at the image right now of this creature, and its nose is actually not that high up. I actually need to bring it down just a little bit. So I'm gonna select all this geometry right in here. Oops, going there real fast. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Just give it the college go. 
squeeze it down just a little bit right there. Alrighty, that's a little better. Oh, somebody here says, Scott Daly, so not a 3D printing guy, but would a printer have problems printing those top teeth, or does it use scaffolding? Uh, so a question from Scott. So yeah, uh, here's the trick when it comes to mouths like this. If the mouth is closed, uh, because the geometry is, uh, for the most part, touching each other from top to bottom, uh, it shouldn't have too much difficulty figuring out where, uh, you know, what goes where. But in areas where geometry is not touching, like let's say this tooth right here, then yeah, uh, the 3D printing program will create a support to make sure that this comes out okay. And if it doesn't come out all right, well, it's ugly. So kind of gives you an excuse to not worry too much about those kind of things. Anyway, so yeah, supports I'm going to cover later on in this tutorial on how to make this work. Um, but yeah, most of the time you try to avoid things like this, but I'm not worried about that because uh, the printer program that I use uh, is pretty solid. You know, So good question, but we will definitely cover that very soon. Anyway, uh, all right, so let's bring this in just a little bit right over here. Just like that. Bring it in right there. Okay, where was I? So what is next on this thing? Um, all right, so I want to add a little more mass to the, the muscles on top. So now uh, we are going to get into uh, some sculpting. So go out here. And let me just make sure I have enough geometry. It looks like I don't. I'm going to add a little more geometry right here. Right across this entire thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the sculpt mode, which is right here. And now I get this to some fun stuff. So I'm going to add a little more mass to this guy. So this is the blob tool. And the blob tool, how it works is it literally just creates blobs of stuff on the geometry that you have. And to undo that, I press Control Z. But also, uh, a neat little trick is when you're, you know, doing something and then you want to smooth it out, you can either A, press Smooth and Smooth, or what I like to do is, let me just undo what I just did, the blob, and then if you just press the Shift key, it turns into the smooth thing right away. So let me just undo that. So, so yeah, blob. Hold down the shift key, smooth. Blob, shift key, smooth. So that's a neat little trick. Um, anyway, where was I? Let me get back to what I was just doing. All right, so let's add some you know, some, add some mass to this guy. So I'm going to add a little bit more muscle right here. You know, make that shoulder stuff. A little more muscle right here. Add, ooh, that looks ugly. Add some muscle right here. Right there like that. Smooth this out just a little right here. A little bit of muscle. Got to give this guy some mass. All right, like that. Let me add a little bit on top. Okay. Make it go down just a little right there. All right, this guy's uh, starting to look pretty legit. So I'm going back and forth between blobbing and smoothing, blobbing and smoothing. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Smooth, smooth. Blah, blah, blah. Just messing around with the geometry. Okay, let's see here. Um, all right, this guy needs a little bit of a little bit of a mass down here. A little bit of mass right here. Okay, so far so good. Uh, probably need to define his 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 little booty a little more. So just get in there. Just right in there like that. Then gotta grab here because he's got his glutes. He's got his glutes. Okay, what's next? Um, all right, so we got the basic shape down. Now let's go ahead and uh, get the sizes right before we get into the nitty gritty details. So I'm gonna get back to the object mode. Uh, this is supposed to be a medium sized creature, so I need to have a disc for that. I'm just gonna go ahead and import. Uh, a medium-sized creature disc. Uh, you can find this on my Thingiverse page. It's also on my um, on my Shapeways page. You can find the STL files for these things. So let me get a medium-sized creature STL. All right. Now I need to scale this guy down. So scale down and bring him up. Okay. 
So this uh, marker here is a one inch marker, and that's supposed to be a medium sized creature. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to be working with that. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to flatten these feet a little bit. Some are a little bit higher than the others when I was moving around the shapes. So let me just go ahead and take care of that real fast. Uh, oh, what's this? Um, oh, never mind. This silly does not have a question. So let me just go ahead and uh, fix this up. I don't want to mess with the uh, overall shape of it too much now. So let me just go ahead and select that. Bring that up just a little bit. I'm just eyeballing it right now. And then go into sculpt mode. Add a little bit more up here. A little bit more there because it looks like the leg is moving up just a little bit. All right, that's a little better. Now let me go ahead and select down here. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Okay, so far so good. Global fly in just a little bit right there. All right. Anyway, where was I? Do 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 do. do. <whistles> okay, pretty good. All right. Actually, let me scope just a little bit right there. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and get into some more details. So this interesting uh, creature um, is covered with all kinds of weird details. Some of these things I would 3D model. Some of these things I would just paint. Uh, because I'm creating something so tiny, um, I'm not going to get crazy with this kind of details. Um, but I, what I am going to do is I'm definitely going to create a bunch of these little itty bitty mushroom uh, sprouts that are growing out of its back. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, if you have access to a program like uh, ZBrush or something, you can like really, really get into town with making these kind of designs. But I'm poor, so I don't own ZBrush. So I'm going to make do with what I got. <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get into some crazy knitting, some crazy details now. All right, so first things first, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save what I've got here. So save as... Here, uh, the I just want to freaking make sure I'm saving this. Uh, thorny, thorny. All right, I have saved it. Um, now that I've saved it, now I can go into some details. So, first things first. Uh, this guy has a funny tongue thing situation going on out here, and. Uh, Let's see here. Let me go ahead and make uh, some tongues. Looks like he's got three tongues. That's pretty wild. So let me get in there, extrude out, and then extrude out again. Mm -hmm. Making a tongue. All right. And let me go ahead and add a little dynamism to this thing. So it's going to go like that. Going to go like that. Going to go like that. Okay. Uh, ready. That's one tongue. Make another tongue. Mm hmm. <laughs> Okay, extrude out, make it go through this, the two teeth that it has going on out here. What's this? Um, McStretcher says, if you get a sub button, we can help you get ZBrush. Oof, 900 in a single license or 180 Twitch subs. <laughs> huh, that is a very good point, uh, <laughs> McStretcher is actually, yeah, I guess. I should be able to afford it with uh, enough uh, Twitch supporters. Uh, but then I have to relearn it. <laughs> That'll be fun. It's not a bad idea, though, Mixed Brothers. That's actually a pretty good point. 
Um, yeah, because I, I used to use ZBrush a long time ago when I was a student, but, you know, I don't have access to that anymore. And, uh, yeah, that would probably unleash some really crazy freaking minis if I freaking had ZBrush. Like, whew, the detail would be insane. But for now, I'm Poe, so I'm just going to have to make do with what I got. And honestly, you know, Blender's treated me pretty well so far. I mean, you know, made some pretty good stuff in the past. And I'm pretty happy with it. And, you know, this is for making 3D printed things, and so far it's been fine. So, would ZBrush be nice? Hell yeah! But, it's okay. I'll be fine. I'll be fine with what I got. Mm -hmm. I always found it interesting, the how ZBrush works, the geometry, how it's like made of pixels instead of pixels. It's interesting stuff. Okay, so those are the, tum the dumb little tongs. Now let's go ahead and add some more uh, some more ridges and weird geometry to this guy's head. So this is easy. All you do is just extrude away. Just extrude with what you got. Very easy. Really easy to pull this, this part off. This is very easy detail. Just extrude. Squeeze down. Super easy. This is probably the easiest detail to pull off on this guy. And when you 3D print it, it's like, it's going to look pretty great. So, you know, all these little ridge lines and stuff. So that's not that bad. So, a little bit there. Mm, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Oops. Don't know what I did there. That was weird. Alrighty. And then, uh... Add a little more, uh, a little more to this uh, little situation I got going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude that, like so. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shrink that down just a little right there. All right. Oops. Shrink that down just a little right there. crazy right here just adding all kinds of geometry and I'm gonna do the same thing over here but I'm gonna do it a little differently because I want this guy to look a little dynamic I want to have a little bit of variety so this guy's claw or horn in the side of his head is gonna be a little different not by much but you know enough to say that uh, wasn't a completely mirrored thing. So I'll point it downward. <clears throat> just like that. And then I'm gonna add like something right here, just a little bit. Just like that. Alright, so far so good. Uh okay. So let me go ahead and uh add a little more ridge lines to the top of his head. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh a little bit of uh, geometry right there. Ah, oh, man. I wonder what things would have been like if I still had Maya. That'd be sweet. Maya was what I learned initially when I uh, started doing 3D many, many years ago. I wonder what version they're on right now. <laughs> Let's see. How am I doing on time? And my wife is, uh, class should be over soon. I go pick her up. So need to uh, get moving. Mm -hmm. All right, looking good, looking good. All right, what's next? Okay. All right, so now we get to the crazy stuff. Now it's time to add some of those weird little sprout things that just cover this guy's back. So that's gonna be fun. So, all right, so let me first save here. And now it's time to make some sprouts. Okay, so first things first, I want to not add any more geometry to this tail. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and add a line right here. And then I'm going to add one more right here. And then I'm going to subdivide this line. 
And the reason why I do that is because if I were to add geometry to the rest of the body to create all of these uh, lumps and stuff, it doesn't add to the tail any unnecessary geometry. Now it added some to the head, which I don't want. So I'm going to do the same trick. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add some geometry right here. And then add it again right here. And then I'm going to subdivide. And there you go. Now it's time to add some of those crazy little details. So I have the free reign to add as much geometry as I need to. And oh, oh I messed up right there. Got to get that too. So let me just grab these. Right, actually, I might as well just grab all of this, right? Mm, uh, I don't know. I got a bad feeling about that. Let me just select this. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Subdivide. All right, now it's time to get crazy. So let me go ahead and add some geometry. Adding some geometry. Oh, wait, I got a question here. It's from uh, Pepper Jack Mac. I think there's a free light version of ZBrush called Sculptress. I don't know how much about it. I still struggle with modeling without trying to tackle sculpting. Oh yeah, that's right. So Pepper Jack uh, Mac just pointed out that there is a free version of it called Sculptress, and that is true. I just remembered that. I was reading about that like a while ago. I forgot all about that. <sighs> I guess I have to relearn that. All right. Well, anyway. For now, though, this process is... Uh, it's pretty good for, you know, just making really basic shapes and stuff. Uh, sculpture style. That's a good point. Alrighty. Okay, so let's add some bumps to this guy. So, I'm going to select at random. Some bumps. Just add a little, you know, geometry to this guy. Extrude. And I'm going to add some randomness right over here. Extrude, do 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 do, extrude. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and add some of those individual little uh, strands, like so. So, go ahead and uh, do that like that. Boop, 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 boop. And then one more right there. And that looks pretty good. Then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, squeeze in right there. All right, so that looks really gross. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. Okay. And then, now that I'm happy with that, let me just go ahead and uh, mess with this right here. Bring this down over here. How am I doing on time? So far, so good. All right. Cause yeah, I got to pick up my wife after this because she's got class. Okay. So obviously, this is uh, much thicker than what you see in the artwork. But the artwork, well, that's artwork that uh, I can't print because it's very thin. So this is just one. And this is, frankly, all that I need. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, just grab one of these. I'm going to go ahead and use that duplicate tool. I'm going to go ahead and just move it around like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and fix this one a little bit by messing with the shape of it. I'm going to go ahead and grab these edges right here and like that. Move it around like so. Cool. Anyway, so yeah, and I'm just going to grab a bunch of these, and I'm just going to freaking duplicate all over the place. So, duplicate. Duplicate. Duplicate again. This one's going to be bigger. I don't know why I'm singing. And I'm going to duplicate one more time. And this one's going to be a little bit longer. Then I'm going to duplicate again. Whoops. Sorry about that. Just like that. And then I'm going to duplicate one more time. Just like that. Do, do, do. 
Mm -hmm. Duplicating with my eyeballs. Duplicating with my eyeballs. Duplicating. Duplicating with my eyeballs. Duplicating with my peripheral vision. <coughs> <coughs> doesn't have to be perfect because it is an ugly monster so it's okay it can get a little crazy alrighty let me do this like uh, about 20 more times and we're gonna keep moving uh, shift D that's right I forgot shift D shift D shift D shift D shift D shift D, shift D. guess is you have to make the spore thicker than in the picture so they will print properly. Yep, Mixture Others, that is correct. This has to be much thicker than in the picture because, yeah, the printer will not be able to detect something as thin as in the picture. There's just no way. I mean, maybe if I had, like, a freaking multi-thousand dollar, oops, multi-thousand dollar printer or something, sure, but what am I doing here? Shift D. There we go. But I do not have that kind of machine. And this is not a shout out to the community to be like, hey, let's get this guy an even better printer. Like, please don't do that. <laughs> this is a nice hobby for me. I don't need to get it any more crazier than it needs to be. All right. So I think that's enough for now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start combining all of this. Now, when it comes to this type of model, uh, there are two things that I can do to uh, combine all this. I can either A, oh, wait, hold on, Rogue 5 E says, Maya has a tool that allows you to extrude faces with some randomization. You could probably use to extrude every other face along the row down the back. That's just a very faces as you pull up the spines. Uh, Rogue 5 E, um, yeah, that would have been useful. <laughs> I'm doing this thing manually. Uh, anyway, so uh, to back to what I was saying. So in this situation, uh, I have two thing, two methods that I can take care of this. I can either a uh, delete the face right here, and I can select the edges here, select the edges here, and then just go ahead and use that uh, bridge uh, tool. Just like that. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other way to do it, though, is, and this is kind of ghetto, but it works, is honestly, you just drag it straight down. And the thing is, is that with uh, 3D printing, um, the programs that you are going to be uh, selecting, that I'm going to show you how to use, uh, they don't really get picky with these kind of things. All they see is this surface geometry. They don't care about if these things are connected and stuff. Some programs might, but I don't use those. So there's no reason to get all crazy. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm just going to do this real ghetto. I'm just going to bring it down, and that's that. And it's not going to detect anything weird on the, to the printer's end. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to get super religious about uh, making the geometry 100% all the way. It's really OK. <laughs> Anyway, so let's go ahead and just select all of these and move on. Okay, 
And if you guys do run into any issues with the geometry where it's like saying it's not working, then you're welcome to reach in there and just combine the stuff just like the way I just showed you. But it's really not that picky most of the time, so it's really okay. Anyway, so let's go ahead and select these things and move on, shall we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to get really religious, I would just get in there and just combine all these faces and just spend the whole night doing that, but it's not necessary. Hey, kitty. Hey. My cat was just, like, going, meow. Yeah, I know, kitty. I'm 3D modeling. It's crazy. Anyway, I think I got all of them. Uh, nope. Got to get these bad boys right here. Alrighty. Okay. So, squeeze. In you go. Uh, looks like I got them all. Let me go into 3D mode. Oh, I can get even a little further down if I wanted to. All right. Simple. Okay, there you go. So obviously, obviously these things are much bigger uh, than what it is in the artwork, which I will show again. But I don't really have a choice. <laughs> I don't have a printer that's so crazy that I can freaking, you know, go all out and stuff uh, with uh, those level of details. All right, so uh, this is the basic creature right here. This is pretty good. Now, on my own personal time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some more spore stuff, and I'm going to get a little more down into the nitty-gritties and stuff. But it isn't anything that I haven't already covered. So now we're going to get into uh, getting this thing ready for printing. Uh, oh, I got a thing here from Sector Bob. You could always run it through my uh, 3D Builder to... Oh, excuse me, Microsoft 3D Builder to repair. Uh... Yeah, that's true, and that's actually what we're about to get into. All right, so uh, now that this thing's ready, I'm going to go ahead and uh, export this bad boy for uh, printing. Let me just make sure that uh, everything is ready to go. Okay, so this geometry is touching that there. Let me see. Geometry, that's touching that, that's touching that, that's touching that. Okay, so just making sure things are touching. That's very important for 3D printing. Uh, this tail, this tail is going to need a support. Uh, to avoid a headache, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just bring this tail down, make it a little bit longer. So let me just do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring that down right there. And then, do, 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 do. And then angle it upward, extrude, just a little like that. Okay, no message from my wife yet. All right, so far so good. Okay, and so now when it 3D prints, it just is connected to this thing, to the circular thing. Uh, I got another thing here. Um, there is one floating in the middle. Uh, oh, one in the middle near the front legs. It's not touching the body. Oh, shit, thank you. Uh, oh, look at that. I see him. Shoot, thanks guys. <laughs> that would have been weird. Let me inspect and make sure I didn't miss anything else. Okay, the stress floating spore is causing. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm on it. I'm on it. Let me see here. Um, just making sure I'm not missing anything. That one's good. All right. One in the middle near the front legs. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you for pointing that out. Man, that would have that would have been weird. Who knows what would have happened. Okay, so this guy looks pretty good. I'm going to increase the jump. Oh, by the way, over here in the modifier for the subdiv, to make things even more tighter, press Views and press the number 2. And now it's, like, even crazier. So uh, just a little tip right there. Okay, let's go ahead and save. Now I'm going to go ahead and export this thing. Looks so much easier to watch you do it. Why, thank you, cold beer 666. Hmm, a beer. That'd be nice. All right, uh, let me see here. So now it's time to get this thing ready to get printed. So I'll go over here to export. Export STL. Export thorny STL. 
Okay. Also, when you export an STL, guys, keep this in mind. Uh, if you press selection only, it would just be whatever is literally selected. When this is off, it's everything in the scene. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so you got your STL file. You're ready to print this bad boy. This guy's going to be freaking sent to the printer. It is done. No, it is actually not done. Not just yet. So first things first, you want to go to Microsoft 3D Builder, and you want to open this uh, file. Because whether you like it or not, um, Blender doesn't create perfect objects. Sometimes it freaking... Uh, there's like little errors and stuff that are just created and I can't explain why that's the case but sometimes it's good to just import these things and just uh, make sh go ahead and let this awesome little program fix it around for you so it says here uh, one of the objects is invalidly defined click to repair so then you go ahead and let it do its thing drink your drink I'm enjoying some uh, mango juice right now. So good. Okay, it is done. Let's see if it changed anything significantly. Um, nope, looks like it's still the same object. Whatever it detected, clearly it didn't. I'm not familiar with STL files. Are they specific to 3D printing or is it a Blender extension? Uh, STL files are specific for 3D printing. Uh, any STL file created from any 3D modeling program would be recognized by the 3D printer, Pepper Jack Mac. Uh, so yeah, the STL file, that's your baby. That's the thing you're going to download off of Thingiverse or whatever to, uh, you know, to 3D print. All right, so uh, Microsoft 3D Builder is done. So go ahead and just save the file, save, and then you're done with that. Now you're going to your 3D printing program. Uh, Cold Beer 66 says, I use Mesh Mixer. Do you know the apps? Is there any good one that I would recommend for Blender? Blender is a free app. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mesh Mixer is another good program to inspect uh, an object. Um, I don't use it very often, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, I'll just show you guys real quickly what I do in Mesh Mixer when I'm inspecting an object. So you import it, you go to Analysis, you go to Inspector. And because 3D Builder did a really good job, there is nothing wrong here that needs to be repaired. So that's good. So once again, uh, when you import an object, go to Analysis, go to Inspector, and it will tell you if there's something wrong. So, yeah. So there you go. Cross-platform, I don't know about Mac. Yeah, I don't know about Mac either. <laughs> I haven't used a Mac in years. Uh, okay. Now that the file is perfect and happy, now it's time to go ahead and start printing. So here is Cura 15.04.6. This is the version I use. There are newer versions out there, and I don't like them. That, that, that's it. I just I don't like them. That's, that's all it comes down to. I, I'm sure they're better, but I, I just don't like them. So anyway, uh, so I import this bad boy right here. So there it is, imported into... Cura. It is now calculating the uh, time it would take to print this thing. It says it would take 55 minutes. Um, so anyway, let me show you how Cura works, and then we'll get into the settings for making this thing print good. So first, you got your print button right here. You print that, uh, and it's going to connect to the printer that you have, and these are all the controls needed to basically make the printer work. This makes it go X, this makes it go Y, Z. You type your temperature in here, you type your bed temperature here, and then you click away and then it starts, you know, heating up and stuff. And this is to control the bed itself, um, oh, excuse me, the uh, extruder itself going up and down. This is to control uh, the extrusion of the plastic. And uh, so anyway, so, and then just so you guys know, uh, for preferences, make sure you have the Pronter Face UI set up because you want to control how much the temperature is and stuff like that. So, anyway, for where was I? Okay, so for oh, if you go over here, let's load an object. This is the printing controls. Right over here are the different views, and the one you care about is the layer view because this tells you what the supports are going to look like when it prints. So you go over here, and let's see here, and it's calculating, it's calculating, it's calculating. All right, and this uh, view is going to tell you what the printer sees. 
Now, as you noticed, it doesn't even detect any of those little spore things. And the reason why is because it is so thin that it won't detect it. That is unfortunate. Um, however, there is a, a fix for this, and I will show you that in a little bit. Anyway, so with the layer controls, it uh, it's going to detect uh, everything as it goes up, 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 just like so. And then it shows, and you see the supports right here. The supports are very important because it shows you, you know, what these things are going to be printed with the model that you make, and you just rip them off so that way it ensures that they're a safe build. Now, uh, let me show you the support settings. So they are set to everywhere. If I were just to set them to touching the build plate, then what would happen is you would just have supports show up right here under the mouth. And that's not actually very helpful for you because you need to have supports right here under the body. So make sure you always pick everywhere. Um, for your adhesion type, you want a raft because rafts are just uh, more stable for adhering to the actual printer bed. Um, so just always pick rafts because you could do the brim, but the brims are just not as stable. They're not as strong. So go with a raft. It uses a little more material, but it really isn't that much. Anyway, for your support settings, um, you want the overhead angle to be 30. You can go with 60 as well. Um, but anyway, the lower the number is, the more supports are going to show up. So just keep that in mind. I used to go, they usually go with 30. Uh, the fill amount is how thick the supports are. 15 is a very good number because it's uh, enough to print away uh, what you need to print, and the supports still come off pretty easily. However, if you're printing something that needs, that has a lot of overhang, uh, go ahead and thicken it to a 25, and that'll make the supports much thicker. They're harder to remove, but whatever you're printing is going to come out good. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, just keep that in mind. So let me just get rid of that go back to 15. Okay, so let me go over the settings now for printing. So we go back into normal mode. Okay, layer height is how the overall resolution of what you're printing. Uh, 0 0.05 is really good for FDM machines. Um, anything below that is pretty dope. Shell thickness is how thick it is on the outside. I use a 0 0.08. Uh, always have retraction on. Um, that's uh, basically like how much of the stuff goops out as it's printing. Uh, for the fill, uh, the bottom layer thickness, I put it at 0 0.6. Bottom top thickness is basically just, you know, how thick it is in the bottom and top. Duh. Uh, your fill density is how thick uh, the inside of the, of the object is. Usually 20% is enough. You don't have to usually go any higher than that. Uh, your print speed, this is very important. You want your print speed to be slow at 30 millimeters per second because the slower the printer goes, the more the details start to pop out, especially if you have a fan blowing on the plastic as it prints. So just keep that in mind. A print temperature, this varies. Uh, this varies on the materials you're using. If you're using ABS, which smells so bad. Ugh. It's good material, but it stinks. Anyway. ABS, uh, you want this to be really high, like around 230, 240 degrees Celsius. Uh, for PLA, uh, it can range from 200 degrees to 220 degrees. It depends on the material. It really does. So look at the instructions on your uh, you know, your material that you buy and make sure you pick the optimal temperature. And sometimes you're going to have to experiment a little. Your bed temperature, I got it down to 70. Uh, that also depends on the material you use. But if you have a, a heated bed, Objects tend to stick a little better to the uh, to the surface. Anyway, support type, like I said, everywhere. The filament that depends on what you're using, obviously. The nozzle depends on what your machine is. Zero point, excuse me, point four is pretty typical. And yeah, this in theory should take an hour to print. But as I told you before, this thing, this printer can't detect those little, those little. Um, you know, those little sprouts. So I'm going to have to thicken those things later to make sure that they come out right. So I will do that. Anyway, however, uh, there is another option for this. And if you have access to a slaw printer, this will most definitely detect your uh, those little uh, sprouts that I created. And the reason why is because slaw printers are more expensive, but they're also new tech that's very, very very precise you can get down to some really crazy details so let me get thorny loaded up here and uh 
let me just show you how a SLA setup works. So it's going to detect these things very easily. And uh, I am not worried about how this is going to come out. And uh, when it comes to support generation, uh, you pretty much follow the same rules as with the FDM machine. So you uh, go ahead and uh, go over here to these controls. The auto, You can manually create supports if you wanted to. Uh, and by doing that on this program, it's just clicking on the bottom of the body and just clicking away like so. You follow the same principles as with an FDM machine. You want supports in areas where there's a lot of overhang. And then you just press generate, and there you go. It creates supports for you. Uh, however, the automatic stuff is also usually pretty good. So make sure you have your inner support selected. Make sure uh, lift isn't necessary, um, but it would make it easier to remove off of the uh, surface. But you don't always need that. So contact is going to be small, made, and auto-generate. It's probably not going to be too different from what I just made. Yeah, not that different. Anyway, so those are the supports. And since this is a slot machine, it's going to be printing instead of from the bottom up. It's printing from the top down. So it's, it's upside down, basically. So these supports, instead of holding this thing up as it prints, it's actually pulling it towards the bed opposite way. So that's, it's, it's weird. All righty. So that's the supports, and then you just go to the print section, and then it's going to slice away, and it's going to print this bad boy. And then there you go. Uh, when it comes to quality, you want to always pick good. You want to make sure you pick really, really nice details. So this can go down to 0 0.25. So this is going to be pretty amazing. And then brim selected uh, if you want. Not necessary, though. And I just got a message that... Uh, my wife needs a ride. Okay, so it's time to go pick up my lady. Anyway, um, so that is, in a nutshell, uh, the process that I do to create an object. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if there's any questions here. Uh, before we uh, start wrapping things up, uh, Blender is free. Blender is in. I haven't noticed, I haven't noticed the smell. You haven't noticed the smell? Oh, I hate ABS. I don't like the smell at all. Ah, whatever. But anyway, um... So, guys, I think that's basically it. That is my uh, my tutorial, and I'm happy to have you all here to have watched my little process. Um, I have about five minutes before I really need to hit the road to go pick up my wife uh, from class because she's in coding school. But if you guys have any questions, send them my way, and I will answer them right now for the next five minutes. And I'm already getting some. What do we got here? We got... Thanks for the stream. I hope you enjoy your day tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to watch Avengers. I'm really excited. I heard there's like a really happy ending at the end of Avengers. I'm so, so stoked. So I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, let's see here. What is the name of the STL viewing and editing package? Uh, the programs, again, are Blender, uh, free, Cura for printing, if it's an FDM machine. Uh, if it's a slot machine, you want uh Basically, whatever program it came with, with the machine, there's no really specific program for that. And uh, you want 3D, uh, excuse me, you want Windows 3D Builder for looking at the STLs. Uh, let's see, next question. Let's see here. Let me just go up here. And so many people are talking, guys. Uh, first time watching, but very interesting. Hey, you're interesting, Cold Beer 666 um let's see here let me scroll down cool stuff thanks really cool stream man thank you so much hey thank you thanks for the tutorial it was fun to watch have you tried multi have you tried multi-material or liquid ink support i have not but i've seen some pretty interesting stuff for that i think that's very cool how they combine the inkjet stuff technology with 3d printing um i haven't tried it though but i've seen some cool stuff and I don't know. Maybe if I like had like eight printers, I'm sure one of them would have that. Uh, let's see here. Cold beer says PVA plus. I don't know what that means. Um, PVA plus. I have no idea. Um, yeah, I have no idea what that means, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I got two more minutes before I really gotta hit the road. So if you guys have any questions. Send them my way. Oh, here we go. Gray Hugh, Gray Ham 101 says, "Awesome stuff. I've enjoyed lurking your models on Thingiverse Reddit. You may be responsible for my 3D printing obsession." <laughs> hey, I'm just happy to help. That's what I could say. 
Uh, let's see here. Cold beer successes that he soluble material for support. Oh, oh, okay, that's interesting. Thanks, thanks, man. Uh, Dustin Gooding says, can you recommend a low-cost intro machine for newcomers? Yes, uh, look into model price. I, too, have looked at your models and love them. Hey, well, I love you. But anyway, uh, yeah, look into model price. Model price has uh, really good introductory machines that actually I've seen people print my stuff with them. Um, I can't say a specific model because they have a lot. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and check out model price. Um, if you want to go up to a little higher of a tier, uh, I would recommend looking into PrinterBot and XYZ Printing. They also have really good machines that are a little more expensive than model price, but they are pretty good machines. I have a printer bot and I dig my printer bot simple metal. You damn right. Printer bot simple metal is freaking how I got started. It's a great machine. It is awesome. However, be warned, you do have to replace parts like every six months or so because, because you know, it's a machine and things break. Uh, my wife says, you really got to fix your tagline. Yeah, I do have to fix my tagline, babe. I don't know how to. I'm really new at this shit. Uh, good news, I missed my train. We'll give you an ETA once I have one. Okay, looks like I have a little bit of extra time. Um was going to suggest a monoprice mini V2, not the Delta. It's a pain in the butt. Thanks. Yeah, I agree too. Um, yeah, Sector Bob says not the Delta. I've heard a lot of good things about the Mini V2. I've definitely heard that name thrown around a lot, so that's definitely a good one to check out. You're tough on Prusa Mark II or Mark III. Nah, not really sure. I, I'm not really sure about either of those. I guess you'll just have to read the uh, reviews. Uh, let's see here. Why did you pick the Noble over the Miami? Because the Noble was the one that I was review like reading the reviews at the time, and it had really good reviews. Uh, and the Moi, oh, oh, not the Miami, the Moi, gotcha. I was about to say Miami. Miami made a printer? Amazing. But uh, the Moi, yeah, I, um, no, nah, I, I was just lo- reading through uh, the top uh, slot printers of 2017, and that was the most inexpensive one at the time that was also well rated. So that's kind of why I just went for that. But in hindsight, yeah, there's a lot of options out there. I'm pretty sure that Moai was probably the better one. But either way, the Nobles treated me pretty well. Let's see, Monoprice pages. You know, I got the Prusa Mark II's second hand. It's pretty great. Nice. And uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty good convo we're having here about different printers and stuff. So, uh, okay, I think that's it. I better put on some shoes and go get my wife. And uh, But this has been a very good discussion, guys, and I'm really happy to have uh, helped you all out. And uh, I guess that's that. I should probably get going. But uh, this was really great to share this with you guys. And, yeah, yeah, I think that's some good stuff. Uh, I wish you all uh, a good evening. Time for me to go and uh, pick up the lady. But uh, again, uh, name's Miguel Zavala, MZ4250 on Reddit, Twitch, Twitter, pretty much everything. So you guys have a great night. And uh, I guess like and subscribe. I don't, I don't know how the YouTube thing goes. People usually say like and subscribe. I don't know, whatever, man. Just It's all good. You guys be awesome, and uh, you guys have a good evening, and I am done. And also, if you guys have any further questions, you can message me on Reddit, on Twitter, anywhere. I will respond. I'm very good at responding to messages. Okay, guys. Good night, and I will see you guys later. I am out.